So pretty spectacular, right? The, uh, the project um, is, is a major effort as part of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia's Vision 2030 uh, initiative, which is really trying to diversify Saudi Arabia's economy. Just as Paul talked about uh, for uh, UAE, Saudi Arabia right now is almost entirely an oil-based and oil and gas-based economy. Uh, their leadership, the, the, the royal court, has a vision for completely diversifying its economy. They, they realize that the, the tourism sector is a huge sector that Saudi Arabia has been completely left out of. They, uh, globally, uh, the GDP, 10.4% of GDP comes from tourism. In Saudi Arabia, that's 3.4%, and primarily, or almost all of it, is from religion-based uh, uh, tourists coming uh, to, to visit Mecca. Um, so this project is kind of the iconic of, of, of three giga projects in Saudi Arabia to establish a tourism industry in Saudi Arabia and really focusing on the luxury end of the market. And you, the destination I showed you uh, uh, really describes that. And most of you know this region much better than I do, but this, this that zoom in was to, to kind of show where we are. Saudi Arabia is establishing a special economic zone, which is the boundaries shown there. It's 28,000 kilometers squared. Uh, and that's where the project is. Um, and it's, it's essentially establishing that special economic zone as, almost as a country within a country, where we're going to have a, a, a legal framework, an environmental framework that encourages overseas investment and, and visitors to come to this very unique uh, destination. We have a, a very strategic focus on the luxury end of the market. Uh, rather than trying to, to encourage millions and millions and millions of visitors, we're really targeting the high end, and that's for very strategic reasons. That's where the highest growth of the tourism sector is, uh, and the most repeat visitors, e et cetera, is, is in that, the high end of the luxury tourism market. And we, we can't do that unless we can really provide something they can't get somewhere else. Uh, these are typically tourists who, who, who uh, spend a lot on tourism, but they've, they've checked their bucket list, they've gone all over the globe. We need to create an experience that they can't get somewhere else. And, and that's particularly difficult with a uh, reputation as Saudi Arabia has as not having tourism before, as kind of starting kind of from a clean slate. Uh, but we have, uh, as the videos showed, we, we have tremendous coral reefs, we have uh, volcanoes, we have archaeology, uh, we, we, we have uh, uh, many endangered species, uh, we have activities uh, you know, for all the water sports. Uh, so it's just a, a tremendous opportunity. We're going to build on that in, in, in efforts that I'll be describing next is on, on really a conservation focused, a sustainability focused uh, enterprise from everything that we're doing is, is about sustainable development, environmentally sustainable development. And we're actually going to provide opportunities for the visitors to embrace in that conservation science, to help us gather information and, and improve the ecosystems that we're charged with, uh, with uh, managing and protecting. Um, this is kind of a, a uh, they, you saw some of the coral reefs, they're spe spectacular, and, and some of these species, like this uh, hawksbill sea turtle, to, as a demonstration of how committed the company is to sustainability. One of the islands at the south end of the lagoon, uh, Al Bukhati Island, was one of the places that they really thought would be one of the perfect places for some of the resorts, until they did the baseline surveys and they found that for a couple months every year, the hawksbill turtle, which is critically endangered on the planet, that's one of its key nesting sites. So that could, you know, if we, do, if we built there, that would disrupt that, that organism's life and, and perhaps jeopardize that organism's survival. We eliminated that from any further development, that island, so we're going to do it where there is less environmental risk. So it's, it's a, a very strong message, and I, I keep seeing that in everything I'm uh, involved with with the company, is let's minimize risk everywhere we can. Uh, so we, we have this uh, sustainable development, kind of this light touch. Uh, there's 91 islands in the lagoon. Uh, we're going to leave 75% of those islands untouched. Uh, we're going to develop on 22 islands. Um, as Paul mentioned, we're going to be carbon neutral, which, and 100% of our energy is come renewable, which for a country whose entire economy has been oil and gas, uh, 
for a century. That, that's a phenomenal statement that, that we're going to be carbon neutral. And carbon neutral doesn't mean just energy production for our site. Is all of our visitors are going to be flying. I showed you that map of where our destination visitors are going to be coming from. Well, that's all a CO2, a, an emissions footprint. We're going to be developing, working with science and technology folks around the globe to actually sequester the carb, everything related to the project. We're going to try and find solutions for using science and technology so that we have zero um, emissions and end out being truly carbon neutral, which is incredibly hard to do. And it's never been done before on the scale that we're, we're talking about. Uh, we're going to be completely single-use plastics free. We're going to have zero waste to landfill. And then just uh, more recently, um, one of the things I've added to the project is kind of a, a paradigm shift in, in how we develop, even though the, the, and it's called the precautionary principle. And it's been around for almost 30 years from the United Nations, but it's mostly been environmentalists talking about the precautionary approach, not developers talking about the precautionary. And it essentially shifts the burden of proof which traditionally development, you've got to prove that something's going to do harm to the environment, otherwise you charge ahead. We're actually shifting the burden. We need to show, put the burden on us, the developer, to show that it's not going to have long-lasting impacts on the environment before we'll actually go forward with something. And we have to explore all of the alternatives, not just the fastest or the cheapest alternative. And that's, that's a fundamental shift in how we operate as, as a community. Um, we're, we're, uh, if you're familiar with the United Nations Sustainable De Development Goals, we're not just getting a couple of them. We're actually aligned with all 17 of the Sustainable Development Goals in every single thing that we're doing. We're, we actually actively look, can we do this from a more sustainable perspective in, in all these different sectors? I, I, I talked about the carbon neutrality. This will uh, kind of build on that. We, we mentioned we're going to be 100% uh, you know, wind and solar energy. Um, we're also going to be 100% uh, electric vehicles, and, and you know, electric cars in many parts of the world are very common now, not in Saudi Arabia. You know, I've, I've seen one since I've been there in three months. Uh, but we're going to be entirely electric vehicles on our site. We're actually going to help create the electric boat market. Our, we have 91 islands. People are going to be traveling a lot by boat. We're going to help that, and there, there are electric boats available. We're going to go 100% electric boats as well. Um, Again, pioneering a new way of doing business. Uh, I talked about sequestration. We don't have all the answers for how we're going to sequester all of the carbon dioxide that our visitors and everything we import are causing, but we're committed to finding those solutions. We just signed yesterday a, a, a memorandum of understanding with the King Abdullah University of Science and Technology to help us pioneer these technologies so we can actually achieve these very ambitious goals. And then another way that we help get carbon neutral is food sustainability. So we're going to be working towards growing uh, a, a significant portion. Uh, we're estimating about 30 percent or th a third of our food on site. So we're not just importing food for our visitors. We're actually growing um, food through aquaculture and vertical farming and arid agriculture uh, on site. And, and the, the food that we import, we're going to require have traceability so that we know that it's coming from sustainable food sources. So wherever it's coming from, it will, will, will know that they've grown this in a sustainable manner as well. Um, I, I mentioned the single-use plastics. Uh, that's a huge challenge. Everything we do in society, uh, we, we look at our tables. Every table here has a plastic bottle on it. That's, that's not this hotel. That's everywhere in society. That is the norm. Our entire destination isn't going to have any plastic bottles. It's not going to have plastic toothbrushes. It's, it's not going to have little uh, toothbrush or toothpaste uh, things that are all plastic, because all of that plastic ends out in landfills. So we're going to come up with different solutions. And I, I wish I could say right now we have all of those answers. We don't. We have many of them, but we're, we're committed to finding those solutions and having this project be one of those pioneers for our industry. Uh, one of the things we just did last week is, as part of the International Coastal Cleanup, and, and which coincided with the United Nations Act for STGs, we committed to year-round removal of plastics and marine litter along all of the islands uh, throughout our lagoon and our entire coastline uh, continually. And we, we, we could import labor to do that, but instead we're hiring folks from the local community there's a community just to the north and the south, uh, Umluj and Alwaj. We're going to be hiring people from that local community to do that work. And that's, that's helping us meet. And we're actually hiring very uh, poverty-stricken people to, to help with some of these you know, sustainable development goals. That's help the community lift itself up and clean up our environment. 
um, the, 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 the magnitude of the commitment that we've expressed, and again, what, what kind of took me from being a research scientist for the last uh, almost 40 years to, to this job is, is this, not only are we trying to conserve the environment that we're, we're developing, which it, to me sounded preposterous when I was being uh, recruited for this position, it seemed preposterous that we could conserve the environment as we're building 49 hotels um, we're going to be having from zero visitors a year to 800,000 to a million visitors a year, and that we could do that without having environmental impacts. That just seemed absurd to me. Now that I've been there for three months, I've seen the commitment. We're not only trying to conserve the environment, we're committed to actually improving the environment by 30%, which I also thought was absurd. But as I'll show you next, we're actually developing approaches that we can do that. Uh, something that goes uh, kind of uh, very much to my, uh, my research background is we're actually going to reach this 30% 30, 30 increase uh, in biodiversity or conservation value by, by choosing those most sensitive habitats, those most biologically diverse habitats like coral reefs, which are threatened around the globe, they're declining around the globe. We're actually going to establish 30% more coral reef habitat in our area. That's part of this uh, agreement with the King Abdullah uh, University of Science and Technology, which has never been done at that scale. The kinds of scale, the major coral rebuilding efforts are about the size of this room. Those are the, the scale that we're talking about, not the scale of this, of, of 28,000 square kilometers. We're going to increase coral reefs by 30% over our area, kind of as an insurance policy, because global warming is going to continue to happen. Our area will be impacted. Some of our tourism activities are going to impact our coral reefs. So if we start building additional reefs, it becomes kind of an insurance policy that this place will still have thriving coral reefs in 30 years and 50 years by being proactive. We're going to be doing the research so that the coral reefs that we build are going to be the thermally tolerant ones, the ones that can survive the most extreme thermal uh, variances. So we're, we're actually going to be preparing the environment itself for the changes that are happening across the planet. Uh, we're, we're also kind of going very, in addition to the, I've focused so far really on, and my, my focus is on the environmental sustainability side. Uh, we're also really going towards smart technology to maximize the convenience to all of our destination visitors. So really they can kind of plan everything from the comfort of their homes and then everything from then on is just very seamless. It's not waiting in lines to do this and to, it's, it's just going to be very, very automated. Um, the, I, I mentioned the special economic zone. Um, the, the, this is essentially being established almost, as, as I mentioned before, almost as a country within a country. So we'll have a regulatory environment that's designed specifically for our mission of sustainable development of luxury tourism in our area. You know, it won't, it, it won't, there won't be other sectors in this particular area, which is limiting, but also for our success, very, very dependent uh, on that. So we can attract people who are interested in investing in that community or visiting our, our destination. I, I, I've mentioned each of these. We're in a very strategic location with uh, something like 60% of the world's population within an eight hour flight. Um, the natural environment you saw in the video of, from the volcanoes to the deserts to the southern dunes to, to these spectacular coral reefs, uh, the, the various activities that we can, uh, we can do with sustainability at the very core of everything that we're doing, this smart destination approach and this special economic zone really designed to cater to, to build an environment that, that really luxury, if, uh, uh, is designed for a kind of different types of offerings from ultra or hyper luxury to luxury to premium in, in, in kind of secluded kind of uh, mono islands to central hubs to some of these destinations in, in the, the Rocky Mountains or in the Southern Dunes, these desert environments, uh, which are also just spectacular settings. Um, we're we're uh, at this point still seeking uh, opportunities for partnership uh, across the different sectors, whether that be the hospitality sector or the res there's also a residential component to this, uh, entertainment uh, sector, the commercial or, or infrastructure sector. So there's many opportunities and, and while I'm not an expert on most of these, again, I wear the environment hat, uh, we, we are looking for partners around the globe who are interested in being part of really this amazing opportunity, as Paul said. This is one of those opportunities of really changing the way we do business on the planet uh, in terms of sustainability. 
Um, the, the timeline that we have, and this is a very ambitious timeline. This has been set uh, you know, by, by the Royal Court when this uh, Vision 2030 was first established. We're hoping to uh, open the, the first 14 hotels uh, in December, by December of 2022, so just a little over three years uh, from now, and then all 48 or 49 hotels uh, by 2030. So again, very, very ambitious, a huge undertaking over a very large area with a very diverse uh, suite of packages for, for that luxury tourism destination market. And with that, I'd certainly welcome any, any questions. I hope, uh, I hope I've inspired some of you to also be really, really working in what you're doing towards how do we get towards sustainable development, not just at our site, but around the globe. And I hope that uh, fits into some of today's discussions as an opportunity for the future around the globe. Thank you very much.